poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. And who I have to say, Ben, is still totally crushing just the, the fashion trends set by you on this show. You would you say, know, wait, you, my special guest, is crushing the fashion trend? Me, co-host of this show, crushing the fashion trends. You are, you're in full-blown Look, Mickey Gold. I don't want to say that you've been out-moused again, but... Uh, I mean, look, the, it speaks for itself. I love that my my goal and objective of it was to w- stretch my fashion muscles and somehow that has turned into it. Who can out Mickey off the other person? That's exactly the way I've interpreted it thus far. And so far, I think I am winning. I will grant you that you yeah. are. You are, in fact, winning. Yeah, you are, in fact, winning. for those of you who cannot who, who are only but listening, who are the the true elite podcaster what's audience, I guess. <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? The theater. Let the me, theater of kernels out there. Let me describe my wares to you. I have on blue jeans, but then I have on what Ben likes to call uh, what? Or- organized scatter. Organized scatter is is the name of that I, that I personally came up with uh, for t-shirt designs where it's sort of like it, it like you have a like little images covering the entire shirt, but they're sort of spaced evenly from one another. Yeah. Yeah, but they, like all of your Mickey's have different like little gestures and expressions that they're wearing. Do you know what this shirt reminds me of? What is that? Okay, so when we were kids, we had a very, very like basic computer, like 1992 level computer. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. And you had like had to, if you had, if you're going to play a game on it, you had to like, you know, put in some, some old floppy disks right. as it were. <laughs> right, right, right. And okay, so. We are we that had, old. We are that old. And available to us on that uh, particular computer were uh, two Mickey Mouse themed games, one of which I think was like letters and one of which I think was numbers. Okay. And in order to load up the game, you had to like, like there was a screen and there was um, this like you had to put in a code and that code was associated with a sheet of paper that came with the game and it was this red sheet of paper that had like 50 different Mickey Mouse expressions or something and on the screen would be like one of the expressions and you'd have to type in the number associated with that expression. Whoa. I have, I have no idea why this was like part of why it was so complicated and why they needed so many different options but mom would always have to come in and be like okay hold on let me find what face is he making and look at this like way too big sheet of mickey mickey mice yeah you, is this blasting a, a memory it, it it is in so incredibly vaguely like we're, yeah. we're talking like the the age of my life when i was three to four years old okay. at best. So it, it is very early on in my life. I do remember this particular sheet of paper and I'm sort of mind blown that this was like a, like a measure that the, that, that was being taken at that time. Like it almost reminds me of the like confirming I'm not a robot type of, you know, security <laughs> yeah. clearances that you yes. have on like present day things. I've seen so many memes about that exact question lately, like especially with WandaVision, like if vision was presented with that box, like, prove I'm not a robot and he's like oh what? <laughs> I am a robot <laughs> this is a real dilemma for me because I don't know how yeah yeah that's a good point are people being like prove I'm not a robot you're a robot <laughs> exactly <laughs> anyway the, the, here's the thing about those though is that frequently it'll say something like choose every picture that has like a, a street in it or something I overthink these things so aggressively mm-hmm. like I, I will be sitting there trying to like I'm like ooh, but could that be interpreted as a street because sidewalks are like streets it, it for, feels like what they're trying to present you with is here is a super easy thing to do if you're human, but what would be very difficult if you were not human. And so suddenly you're like a, in a like I'm with stupid kind of situation. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. that's exactly how it feels like I and I I always feel because the other one too it would be like a picture of like the interstate you know with cars kind of like coming at you like a like a uh, traffic cam or something yeah. like that and it'll say like you know choose every picture that has a car in it but like it's all like you or sometimes it is like one continuous picture yeah and you're almost like mm, but i bet the bumper is barely sticking out in this other frame because like it's yeah. not all like it's a little cut off by the grid <laughs> and like does that mean it's technically in that that like middle left cube yeah you know and it, I don't know. I get like, I, it actually gives me like, like mild anxiety. Oh, I'm me like, too. I'm like, oh boy, here it. we go. Really don't mess up. Really don't. Like I check the boxes. Then I go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Okay, good. Oh, I failed. <laughs> sometimes, I, sometimes I think that it's almost like the computer's like, ah, he was close enough. I can tell. I can tell he was in the, he was in the ballpark. <laughs> I often sometimes think that too, because some of them like, I'm pretty sure I misclicked one of those and it let me through. Hmm. Right, right, right. How does this work? How does this work? Does Speaking work? of that, this is actually something that when I was a kid for the longest period of time, I thought when you played the computer in a, in like a video game yeah. that there was actually someone somewhere who was so gifted at like playing at this specific skill level that you just selected as to play against you like it, I, it was so baffling to me to think that the way that the programming could work is that like there was this ability to fluctuate. Like I didn't have enough trust in, in what could be programmed into a game. Right. So the, my belief was that there were people all over the world who were, who were constantly on standby and constantly ready to play as like whatever difficulty you chose for the computer to be. Right. And they were, they were always scaling their efforts perfectly, which what is ironic about this is that the technology that would be involved in order to be playing effectively on the internet with people, you know, in 1995 would have been much more advanced than what was actually happening. Right. But in my mind, that was the more logical explanation. Right. That like you chose level 10 difficulty. Like, okay, this person's got to be on their game and they're, they're just sitting in the chair and they're like down to one. I'm going to troll this kid. <laughs> he thinks this is easy. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the, the other thing too, was that we had uh, our grocery store that we have here in like this part of the world is called Kroger's or Kroger. K Rogers. Yeah. K, yeah. K Rogers. Yeah, Kroger's. And, um, they uh, there there was like this space sort of like behind the checkout counter that I think was like the offices for like the administrative s- staff that like ran the grocery store. Yeah. And there was sort of like a like a little bit of like a two way glass type of thing going on, but you could still see through it at our childhood grocery store. And I remember thinking that is where the people I was playing on the computer game against. I thought that's where they were. Right. It's like like S- Sega is dist- is positioning people in grocery stores across the country right, right, to right. play literally any game any kid is playing at any difficulty at any time right at random why do you think there are loading screens it was it was clearly them having to like prepare themselves to play exactly the, like like a level eight black ranger yeah we had the power rangers fighting game we did have the power rangers fighting game and i think it's the best i've ever been at a fighting game in my life wow i think if we found a way to hook up a sega genesis and play that game i would still be good at it wow i can rem- i remember Remember the controls. Of course you do, because yeah. that is how your brain works. It, I mean, it's it is a weird thing. Sometimes I'm like I've just got a lot of useless information in this brain, but other times those things will come into play, and then it's like game on, game on. Quite you literally, you, in beat, this case. you think you can beat me in the Black Ranger? I don't think so. And you know how to do the whirlwind attack? Yeah, it's just b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b there was little motivation for me to teach other people how to play games well. Right, right, you know, right, like right, why yeah. then then they might be as good as me. I don't. This is this is like my secret advantage. Exactly. Like I took the time to learn, and therefore yeah. this is mine, right. and I will not share. I mean, you had access to the instruction booklet. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just didn't care as much. That's what it came down to. Right, I guess so. Yeah, uh, that's actually, it's sort of like an interesting possible segue into one of our, our potential topics for today. I might be reaching on how, how much of a, how, how much of a segue this is. Segway. Segway. Okay, so you had written in, in our show notes today and it actually got me very excited because I was like, I, w- I want to, uh, I want to explore this topic in a bunch of different ways. Oh, okay. But you wrote down, is it arrogant to care about legacy? Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. Yes, I did write this down. Uh, well, because last week you were talking about like what what movie or piece of media from today will end up having like the greatest legacy. Yes, and I I feel bad. I don't think we actually ended up exploring what the what it would be. Like, like you didn't give me an answer. <laughs> I didn't give you an answer. That's okay. Yeah, we just more talked about uh, what what you were meaning. So anyway, I don't know. Did you have a suggestion for what piece of media might have the greatest legacy? Gosh, right that, now that's a thing. So when when I originally came up with this thought, it was actually it was a year one. Uh, video topic for super carlin brothers and my answer to the question at the time was in fact game of thrones and i was like it's going to be this masterfully executed it could have been perfect story that like 
that was it, it was a really good example of taking something and and like maybe where before it would have existed for like a niche audience of people who were really into like the the fantasy genre and that yeah. type of thing and like made it so mainstream and like was also tackling like modern day themes and ideas you know it, it like it was doing so many things at once yeah and it was so well and, and so many people were leaned in and it was like it was like WandaVision where like I, I wasn't going into any conversational circle and somebody was like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that really into it. It's like everybody I knew was into it. Right. It was everyone's like, in a Game of Thrones. Yeah. Of course, it, everyone's watching. And, and so it could have just been my echo chamber. Like it could have been the case that like mm-hmm. this particular show to me had this like total like like it was just perfect in so many different ways. Oh, this will be interesting. Will, will uh, let me let me ask the the theater of colonels listening. Yeah. Right now. Is anyone unaware of what Ben is talking about already. Like, oh are you gosh. just like completely like game of what? Like there's no way there's no, it seems impossible. It's so, it's so, it felt so ubiquitous, it but maybe felt it's so not. ubiquitous. And so that's the thing too. And this is, this is probably like why I have probably more like unresolved anger inside of me about the ending of game of Thrones than, than possibly like any other single piece of media. <sighs> and I think it's because I felt this way about it. Like I felt like I was watching history happen. Like yeah. I, I was watching, I, people have pointed out to me that like if you go back to the earlier seasons like not all the CGI is really all that perfect and some of the acting here and there is not like as, like as good as I interpreted it when I first saw it. Well, e- the thing is I, I that's probably true, right. but I would argue that doesn't matter because what what really matters was like the cultural impact yeah. it was having. You know, like just because something is done the like this is the weird thing about like uh what what piece of media might have the greatest legacy is that it's unlikely to be the best thing. I right. would think I would think it is going to be the thing. It's the the best thing that had the widest reach. So like you have this giant pool of things and something is like the top tier best thing that's actually ever you know been made but it won't have the 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 reach you know it's like when when a movie at the academy award wins and you're like i've never even heard of it right right right, right. yeah that's not going to have good legacy it will probably be better than the thing that has great legacy right yeah and in in a lot of ways so my my immediate knee-jerk reaction as you sort of like describe it in that manner uh and especially when i originally posed this question kind of comparing a modern day piece of media to like a potential Mona Lisa level of like fame yeah. is in, and, and again, I'm not like, you know, an art expert, but like the Mona Lisa at this point is almost in some way, shape or form, like famous for its fame. Right. Like, you know, it is, it like became a very famous painting. And like at some point in time, I think it stopped being about the painting itself. And it was just like, it is now famous because it is so well known. Right. It, and, it has, it's famous for having, its own legacy, but it's like, and like, I'm not enough of an art major or anything to know, but I like, I don't know if the Mona Lisa is considered a good painting. If there's like a, exceptional brush strokes or like if there's like deep things, I know there's lots of layers to it and lots of people have dissected it a ton because it's famous. Yes. But yes. is it the best example of whatever it was trying to accomplish? I don't know. Is it just the piece of like Renaissance art that just stood out the most? Maybe I, I can't answer it, but I would bet there are, more um, difficult to craft things that you don't know about that exist. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. And and so like moving on from that idea, like there's a part of me that, that like almost wants to reach like for Star Wars. Ooh, you think Star Wars? Because okay. Star Wars is another really good example of like it's got pretty bad acting. Um, it's it's like not the most airtight you know, story ever, but like, it would be really interesting to me if like fast forward again, we're talking like 500 years in the future, like, like quite a long time. It would almost even be interesting to me if star Wars, the original movie, the, what we call episode four, right? Because when that movie came out, it wasn't intended to be a series. It was just intended. It wasn't even called episode four. It was just called star Star Wars. wars. And it would be really interesting to me if the history books were like, it was so popular, they made a bunch of subsequent stories. And like, and that is the way that history would ultimately remember Star Wars. Because we think of it as this like gigantic expanded universe of... Right. Of, and, and to call it an expanded universe would probably even be... 
for most people, they would think like, oh, like the comics, the novels, the video games, like all that type of stuff. I would be referring to the expanded universe as any other main episode hard stop like Star Wars, the movie, what we call episode four, what we call a new hope is like what they would refer to as this piece of media mm. and everything like it else gets so big that they would have to just immediately they would have, like in order to describe it, they would have to scale it all the way back to the beginning. They would have to scale it all the way back to the beginning. And then really all they all the history books would talk about about the other episodes was this piece of media was so popular in its time when it came out in, you know, 1977 that they actually made like a variety of spin-off movies like like almost as if like that is how all of the rest of the star wars right. universe would be seen through the lens of historians from 500 years right from now. like that's the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy entry about star wars like so popular it spanned spin-offs yes exactly right? very right yes like, you're like maybe we need a little more <laughs> oh, right right right, right. Like, i think that's the joke in uh hitchhikers is that ford prefect the alien who writes for the, the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy comes to earth to write an entry about earth and after living there for a decade his entry he expands the entry from just being the word harmless to mostly harmless <laughs> He's like, I doubled the entry. He's like, right. Arthur's like, that's all you have to say about Earth. Right, right, right. Like that's that, like you think that we're accomplishing all of these really, really, really significant things, but everything yeah, right. comes down to scope. Right. You know, it's like it's yeah. like if you are coming from uh, a, like a wildly more diverse, technologically advanced. Um, yeah, like you, Earth it, just feels very basic. Right, right, right. If you are aware of the fact that there's tens of thousands of different, you know, um, life form occupied planets out there and you, and you reach this one it would be like yeah i've been here for a little while it's fine like, yeah <laughs> it's not dangerous i wouldn't go back <laughs> <laughs> nah yeah there are better places can you imagine if you were like meeting people from other planets on the regular like oh yeah i've been to tatooine or like oh yeah like like Oh, like Tatooine's a bad example because it'd be like there's like three. It seems like there's three cities on the whole planet. Sure. But like if you're like, oh, yeah, I've been to Coruscant. It'd be like, yeah, what part? It'd be like th th you couldn't even answer that. It's not like you could that the idea that you have a shared experience from having been to the same planet is ridiculous. Sure. You know, which is like, you know, it's like when you go to when you talk about college, it's like, oh, you you went to Virginia Tech. Do you know this person? It's like, you know, there's like 29,000 people there. Right. right, right, right. No, yes. I don't. Right. It's the same way with Canada. Right. Very I, small place. Right. Very. very yeah. It's like, you, you live know, in Canada. You, you must know my friend. You must know my friend. And then they do. And, and then like, they do because it's Canada. They're all so friendly. Every, every Canadian just like hit pause. They're like new podcast. Just kidding. Eh? <laughs> That was good. That Thank was you. really good. Um, okay, so like touching on that a little bit because I actually think again I'm able to I'm able to segue it back to the same question. So when you asked about legacy yeah. originally, I, I think that my my knee jerk reaction to it was sort of like, well, what would one person mean by the question of like legacy? Like, what is that you asking? Like, it, how how much can I value? How important is my own personal legacy? Like, yeah. In in with that question, it's almost like. How much of the objectives of your life are for the enjoyment of your life while you are living versus how much of the objective of your life supposed to be how ultimately your existence impacts the future after you're gone? Right. Uh, and, and I feel like that, especially like if you talk about legacy, it would very much feel like that's a huge piece of the puzzle. Like, like when I'm gone, this is what I will have left behind. And even that question is like widely interpreted as like, are you talking about like initiatives, programs, businesses, or things like, like children, family, right? It can know. go in a lot of different directions. I suppose what I am talking about when I, when I wrote this note was like, is it like, um, like how will people remember you? How will people talk about you? Sure. And is like, is that something worth caring about? Like if you're caring about that, like, is it uh, when I say, is it arrogant to care about legacy? Is it like, do you, is it like, does that mean you feel so self-important that people are definitely going to talk about you? Or is it like your goal is to become so important that people will talk about you. Like I'm living a life in such a way that I am trying to guarantee that I will be talked about afterwards. So, and here's a question too, on that note is have, have you ever, and this is, this is going to sound very, very self-centered, but like, have you ever wondered what somebody might say about you? Like during your eulogy, 
Like, mm. like sort of like if, if you're at that moment, like if you could be in a, like an attendee of, of your, uh, like funeral, whatever the case may be. And you got to like hear how you're like what you left on the yeah. people around you and like the, the manner in which they would celebrate you. Like, is it the type of thing like where, where you could imagine like, I left a positive impact on these people or is it the type of thing where like, like would, would be, would there be like niceties attached to the idea of, of, you know, not speaking ill of, of people who are gone. Right. Like yeah, that type of thing. Right. Right. Like there's like an asterisk at your funeral where people probably aren't saying mean things about you. Yes. Yeah. Right? As, a, as a general rule. I, yeah, I, I less think about like what people tact. would say at my funeral and more like what people like what, like just what history in general would say about me. Like, will people I never met know my name and talk about me or something like that? That's like the question or right. something like that. That That's sort of what I mean by legacy. Right. And I mean, and that's interesting, too, because like very frequently, uh, like the, being like the president of the United States, for example, is not a job that I that I think like many people really want it's a very hard job it yeah. basically ensures 50 percent of the population do not like you right um but it is probably one of the most surefire ways to ensure legacy like people will remember you probably you, you will be remembered right, right. And, like you're, and you're not going to be totally forgotten to history even if you're not a very memorable president because i certainly couldn't name them all no me either but, but it, it's like i i would almost there wonder, is record of them <laughs> there is record of yeah. them it's is that part of the appeal to the people who who do seek out that kind of like um like position in society i think it almost has to be right but so the yeah so and i think part of what i've been um like when I so I part of why this has been a question on my mind recently is because I think at some point when I was just like a little kid, like it was presented to me as like, no, it like the answer to that question would be yes, it's very arrogant to care about that. Like you shouldn't care about that. Like that is like that leads to trouble that leads to pride that leads to like, like don't worry. Like, and I was just like, it was one of those like, oh, I absorbed that. I took it as fact and I went forward in the world and like then like I'm more growing up and I'm like, or, you know, even in the past month or so, I'm like, is that, is that what that is caring about that? What that means? Or is that some person I don't remember his opinion? Obviously they don't have a good legacy. Or it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it like, like what have I been operating under this assumption? Do other people care about this? Like actively and openly and without like scorn? Like, I don't know, but then like, you know, like, so for example, I listen to a lot of ham. Like whenever I finish a book, I find I'm resort back to listening to the Hamilton soundtrack a lot. Oh, sure. Sure. So much of that, like every character in that play is concerned with legacy. Yes. But at the same same part like when I first watched it I'm like well yeah but this is exactly like that's part of the commentary is that like look what all the trouble like they're all so concerned about it and then all leads everyone to trouble right or or is that the commentary they're making at all or am I just projecting that on there well and I, I don't know I mean this is again this is what is so it's so odd about it is that like very frequently in the stories that we like watch and observe I mean going back to Star Wars for example or Game of Thrones for that matter both of these stories are are narratives about people who like wanted to seize power like you're almost looking at it through the lens of like of course like this is the thing all people aspire to have is like to be the leader of the big thing you know mm -hmm. like i mean that's that's the emperor that's every single character with the exception of Jon snow and game of thrones like everybody wants to be on the throne but then like it, even to make it extremely topical i mean there's a huge conversation going on about like Meghan markle and prince harry and sort of like oh. the impact of being a member of like the royal family it's there's this idea perception that it's like this extraordinarily like desirable place to be and I, I feel like if history tells us anything, if, if even like going to elections tells us anything like uh, it, it, it doesn't seem like that many people really are seeking this out. Like, mm -hmm. I've always thought it would be so curious to see, like, what it would be like if it was an election year. And instead of it being like in a, a wildly divisive thing, the real issue was almost like, man, I, I love both of these people. I don't know which one to choose. Right. You know, like, like <laughs> right. what if that, yeah, that like, never happens? Right. That, right. Yeah. But like, you know, what, what if it got to the point where it was like, it was, um, and I don't even know how that could ever happen. It, that is a very interesting, that's it. That's, 
Boy, I would, yeah, that I would love that scenario where it's like I'm having trouble choosing because I want to vote for both of them. Right, right. right? It's That's like, I, like see, I see the advantages but, of both of these. Yeah, people. but even when if you were voting like in the primaries, it's like people get very divisive about like which version of the things they already like they want. Oh yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, this is a show where we talk about having strong opinions about weak things, so we split hairs on extremely minute things. But sure, yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I mean, the, yeah, there's there's a lot to be said with it. There's like in terms of of how all of these I don't know these these pieces sort of like form together and and like what it really means to you to like have a legacy, I guess. Like, um, like one of the things that came to mind very quickly to me was like was was children. Like I said, one of them would have been like your last name. Uh, like I know that a lot of people get like very. Um, uh, like very extremely like sentimentally attached to your own last name. Right. And it kind of becomes this, this big thing where it's like, maybe you want, uh, it, uh, let's go back to, to cinema instead of applying it to like real life. But the idea of like having a son to carry on the name or whatever right. is, is like very frequently, like a really big priority for, for specifically and frequently like monarch type characters, especially right. uh, where, where that's a big deal. So like how big of a priority is that to you? and why or or taking it one step further having like a junior you know like having um having like a a child who bears your same name uh which is like not a, something i've personally encountered yet um i i very interestingly you are named jonathan our dad's name is john correct our grandfather <laughs> is named john but goes by jack uh, but our dad is not a junior to him and you are not like Jonathan is different from John and yeah. you guys have different middle names. But then you have one of one of the twins names is Nathan John, which yeah. very interestingly, I think this is the cleverest thing in the world is your name is basically John Nathan, right? Jonathan, John Nathan. Yeah. And so Joe Nathan. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Nathan John. So his his name is reverses like, Jonathan, <laughs> yeah, which is amazing. Which is amazing. Yeah, I, I find that to be a lot, a lot cooler than having having like pulled the junior card. Like, I think it's just really that that was like a it it worked out magnificently well because Beth and I had a very difficult time landing on boy names. We really wanted like once we found out we were having twins, yeah, uh, we were thinking of names and we like. It, it's so weird because there was like so many girl names we liked that we had to like whittle it down and so few boy names we liked that we kept canceling everything out right, right, right. until we were finally left with uh, Nick and Nate and then we were trying to determine what like what would middle names be and that worked out really well because like Beth um, because then like if you wanted to name your kids after you know your your parents or something like that. So there was something going on there. It would have maybe felt like, okay, well, we we chose your side of the family. So that left the other side out, but we were having twins. So we could use both our dad's names, which was really good. And then I was like, who gets which name? And uh, we realized that, you know, if you put John after Nathan, then you can flip it around and it's Jonathan. That's really fun too. So. It's, it's, it's super cool. Yeah. It's I think it's yeah, it's immensely clever. Yeah, it's yeah. really awesome. I'm pretty happy with that. And, and so I, there's like a there's. I, I love I love that because there is like a morsel of legacy attached to that. You know, it, like it sort of is your name in a manner of speaking that like is being passed on to one of your children, which is really cool. Yeah, Nate, be careful with that name. <laughs> you got a lot to protect there. You got a lot to protect, son. Um, I will say this. I wouldn't have thought having it like having a son matter to me in the way of like preserving the family name or something. But when we found out the um that you know luke was going to be a boy like when we found out the gender like there was this weird sigh of relief in the back of my brain that i was like very surprised to feel that was like well there you go name <laughs> like the name lives on <laughs> oh wow, wow, and, wow and i was like that man that is such a weird like i didn't think i cared about it but like i remember feeling that and i was like hmm that was interesting like like it, it mattered to you in in a way that that it, it's interesting to me that it mattered to you and you were surprised that it mattered to you yes yeah it was like not it's like it doesn't matter to me but now you act, but also you don't have to worry about it now sure, like, sure. at least there which is such a weird even the idea of like um like male children carrying on the family name feels like that's becoming like a very outdated sort of oh, completely. idea because so many people that just don't even take last names when they get married. Yes. At this point. And, I, and this was, this was kind of like a, like when Alice and I got married, that was a, a really like, 
it, it like was so fascinating to me how little of a thing it was that we were discussing. Like it wasn't really something that was super like prominent in terms of how were we going to handle this? And are, like, are you planning to? And like, you know, right. It, Cause it was kind of one of those things where it, it was really like ball in her court uh, where I was really fine with it either which way. And right. ultimately what she did was she had her middle name was Catherine and um, it wasn't like specifically like sentimentally attached. It was just a name that like her mom liked when she was born. Mm-hmm. And so she basically is now like her old last name is her middle name and her last name is Carlin. So it's like Alice Haynes Carlin. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of people do that. They like swap their middle name for their maiden name. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that that was it really was completely like a, like a her decision kind of thing. But I remember thinking that like, you know, where it is this extremely common practice that you see happen, but also that like, it was, it was not necessarily a, like a priority to me that it happened for me. Right. Um, so that, I don't know. I, I guess that was, that was sort of interesting. Yeah. That, that idea of the last name and how important is it? And cause the other thing too, at the end of the day is like your children are your children, regardless of whether or not they share your last name. I it, I know it, it like, whether you share the last name, obviously your descendants are your descendants, regardless of the name, but there is something like a little like sad about your name dying out. The, uh, you know, I, I understand that too. Yeah. Like there, there is this thought of like, you know, like my, my parents were, were this name. My grandparents were this name. Their parents were this name. Like, you right. Know, it's been around for, for such a huge amount of history that maybe, maybe that's where that like sense of responsibility comes from. Maybe it's like, man, this, na- I don't know. Like this name is just, what if I'm the reason the name dies, that could be like, well, that doesn't feel like that would feel like I've let my entire ancestry down or something, but you wouldn't have, but, but you, you wouldn't, wouldn't have. have exactly. Of course you wouldn't have, but right, I right. can, I can, easily understand why people would feel that way yes 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 um <laughs> so that actually brings me because i think the movie coco uh tackles sort of this the same kind of concept of legacy i think from two different angles that i really really like uh and i think it's sort of like interesting for a discussion because one of the things um about uh, the, I guess like the portion of Mexican culture, and I don't know if it applies to all of Mexico, but specifically where Miguel is from, they have sort of this like multi-generational family mm-hmm. that like all lives together. So right. th- like the Rivera, like c- compound, if you will, is like a space where like Miguel lives with like his siblings and uh, his parents and his aunts and uncles, his grandmother and his great grandmother. And um, this is sort of like an idea that like, here in America, we don't really follow this tradition anymore. Like there are three, like you and I, that we have a a younger brother, Tyler, and all three of us like have our own houses and like our parents live in the same town as us and they have their own house. So like, you know, out of the five family members, we literally own four houses, right? There's no, there's no Carlin compound. It's not everyone in one spot. Right, right. But castle, that's a way better word. Carlin ca- Castle. Carlin Castle. Maybe if there was a castle, maybe we would. I don't maybe know. we would. I mean, the day you know could how come. I like castles. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like castles? Right. Um, but so the idea here that I think is really interesting, because we were just talking about like the want to become like a, like a civic leader, a, a president, a governor, a senator, congressperson, a mayor, whatever the case may be. Um, I don't know that it's like the most sought after profession. Like, I don't know anybody I went to high school with. No, there's one exception to that, but I don't know many people i went to high school with that like wanted to be one of those people i can tell you i certainly do not <laughs> yes exactly yeah. right right like it's not it's not something i really aspire for but if you live in this multi-generational household then i do think and, and as we sort of saw in coco there is like a little bit of a um a very internalized hierarchy that i think happens because everybody is contributing to I keep using the word compound, which doesn't feel like the right word, but, but like the, the general familial household. And it's the type of thing where there's a very senior based, um, role that eventually you could and would take over. So like it's Miguel's grandmother, even though the, the great grandmother, Mama Coco is technically like in, still you know, alive. She, she's still alive, but maybe has like aged past, uh, holding this title in the family. But then you can see like the grandmother, like wears it like with an enormous amount of pride. Like she takes like, right. a, a huge amount of pride in sort of being like the head of house for, for all of the Rivera family. Mm-hmm. And I could see that being like a really um, uh, fulfilling thing in life. If you basically, you know, you, you are sort of like almost 
almost like waiting your tur- turn. Like you are not like a, a huge member of society necessarily like in a like elected leadership type of position, but eventually you are the leader of your like your people you mm-hmm. know like the immediate family around you sure and and then as such you know like all of the the respective careers and and each each person's role is sort of all like you know you don't go out and like make money that is like your your money yours but it's like the money that you bring to the household right like every everything revolves around the family everyone's income comes back into the family and then would be remanaged by someone within exactly and dispersed for the, the yeah betterment of everyone right and more and or less that sort of ideal falls under like um societies that have like a greater value on like collectivism like like you know family community state nation you know like sort of yeah. like where but but probably first and foremost is you you're really caring for those like you know in your most immediate proximity most likely um so that that is really not the that's not the kind of society that we necessarily operate in here not really. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So that, I think that that's, that's sort of interesting because there, there could be uh, a greater sense of legacy. Maybe if you like that, yeah, that, that seems like a, like a different kind of legacy even then it's like your family legacy. Yeah. Like you're concerned about the whole family's name going forward and how specifically your family remembers you mm-hmm. maybe rather than like the greater history of the world. Right. Remembers you. Right. 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 Yep. So that, that's a big one. But then in addition to that, Coco also tackles this idea of, of second death, mm-hmm. which would be like, what is the day when like a, like after you may be gone like basically the person the last person who still has memory of you is also gone right and and that is sort of like what we see oh what's the character's name no Chicaron. Chicaron. yeah yes he's the one who uh lends miguel and um hector the guitar but right. you, you see him basically experience second death which would basically signify that like the the last person who had remembered him is now gone as well right um that that is like a another especially through the topic of of legacy would be a really 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 big one because you know like i don't i wouldn't know the name of like our grandfather's grandfather right you know which is kind of interesting right that is interesting like already that's starting to fade right exactly exactly and it really isn't like that far away so like if you were to think you know that like uh like like luke's kids 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 like might not know who you are oh can't hmm, don't like it i know i know i know here's a weird thing though to consider that you and i in particular we are um extremely public people yeah you know in in a way that you know we upload two videos a week to youtube and normally you know like either of us is hosting one of those videos yep and like it's weird to think those videos will probably continue to exist online on the internet you know basically forever right. you know so i don't know i it's hard to imagine a day in the future where not a single person on earth anywhere watched a single video like we accrue zero new views right like like nobody like, watched a super carlin brothers video, video. oh all. what a weird thought. what a weird thought because you could all they would still be there right you know but like yeah i you know there must be um that must exist i'm sure there are there's tons of videos on youtube that don't get any views any on any given day right but um or even like this podcast like this podcast will just exist forever you know someone could be we could some someone could be listening to this 50 years after our death they could have just stumbled into popcorn culture and they're like, oh, wow, that's me right now. He's talking about me. Right. Weird. Like, how does that? Isn't that? Is it weird to think that someone could listen to your words from beyond the grave? It, 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 yes, for one. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Have uh, you considered it, this about our YouTube career at all? Not in the way that you're describing because it is. It's, <laughs> I've always been so afraid that it would be gone just during my life. Um that I, I it hadn't even occurred to me that there's the the possibility that like almost all of this stuff that that we're kind of recording could be like little arrows into the future a little bit like like mm-hmm. they can continue to stand the test of time in a way that like we physically cannot right and we've really talked a lot about like mortality of <laughs> getting deep today man getting, getting real <laughs> deep. Getting deep right 
Uh, I mean, no. obviously, people are still talking about popcorn culture 500 years from now because it was remembered as the it, you know the the greatest podcast that ever was. The greatest podcast, yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. People are still finding Green Mallard Association stickers all over the world, wondering where did these ducks come from? <laughs> What's with all where the did ducks? the ducks come from? Okay. By, we've been getting some good submissions on those, by the way. We have been. We have been. But what if that was like you know like the 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 heads on Easter Island? Are yeah. you familiar with these? And this yes. is like, kind of like a giant mystery. Like why are they there? Where why? did they come from? Yeah. Like, what was the purpose what if it was literally just a super whimsical chief of a tribe like it's eons ago that was like this is gonna be so funny that they're, they're not going anywhere <laughs> just pranking them just just put them places just guys put them. just put you know Let's what just do it if that one leans a little bit all the better what, all the better. what fa- an amazing prank i know i know what legacy what legacy but see no one the problem is no one knows who did it yeah it was not a very well documented legacy this that would be so funny though like i love i love just projects like that that are just like it's just confused it's like not chaos for like like negativity but if you know you and i secretly built like 50 identical 10 foot statues and we're able to like over the course of our life just erect them in remote locations around the globe and just well, we'll just see what happens we'll, well oh, just see what happens goodness like, can you imagine I know. being the insider knowledge like like literally making it like your quest your goal and everything to like cart one of these out and like to like the middle of like a canyon in the desert somewhere and then just like wait for that one hiker to find it one day and it's yeah. like it's it's not like a it's not like a well-traveled path it's just like completely obscure someone spotted them on a drone one day and it's like wait a second what is this right and like news articles start sprouting up everywhere and it's like (laughs) i am the person who knows and i will tell no i will tell no one and you will all wonder about the weird statues forever okay so here's a question it's so funny it's always it's always i feel like it's always like pylons you know like no lame I, I know, right? Right. Why, why pylon? Pylons. It's so trapezoidal. So tra- yeah, come on now. I know. You could come up with something better like a duck. I was I was also thinking duck. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Like giant duck statue? Giant, like, I'm thinking like wings spread. Ooh. You know? Like a big old, just, just a big old duck statue. Shall we become sculptors? Oh. Uh, we, at the very least, it seems like we need to know a sculpt. If you listening, uh, theater of colonels are in this, are in the statuary business, yeah, as it were, as it were. Uh, you know, if you have a, if you're good at sculpting, at uh, casting, casting large statues, uh, you know, just get in touch with us. We might have some. Uh, maybe we have some ideas. We have a commission. We have. Uh, we have some ideas. Uh, this would be so funny too. Is that. Like I can, if if you arranged it in such a way, this would be. Oh, I'm, I'm just getting fun ideas. Okay. But like, if you arranged it in such a way that like you had them built and you had them like it, it arranged such that it wasn't until after you died that all of them like appeared or like were were revealed Ooh. or something, and then people started finding them because then like we're talking about it right now, so people are going to know it's us. But yeah. but it will take people the the time it takes to like stumble back upon episode 67 of popcorn culture to like start piecing together like wait a minute it was these guys how long do you think it would take if the, like if it's like our confession like this is us saying right now we did it it was us it was us we did the duck statues we did the duck statues and this is this is clearly a hundred years from now and it's like wow 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 they just admitted to it like point blank, point blank. straight up Nice and simple. Nice and simple. Here's the thing. If you're listening, if you're listening, just just don't tell anyone. Yeah, like, exactly. We know you know, and this is your opportunity to be in on the joke. In on the duck like, statue you, thing. You alone will be able to like walk around and be like, oh my God, they did it. Oh my, I know exactly what it is. I know exactly what it is. You know what? I would just keep it silent. Just enjoy the fun. Enjoy knowing. Enjoy that feeling. Right. You right. will know. You can embrace the fact that you know about the duck statues. You know about the duck statues. Welcome to the secret. Welcome to the secret. Don't oh, tell this, anyone. It's so ex- it actually makes me feel closer with every single one of the little kernels out there. It it's also, like, yeah, um, on a much smaller scale, this is already exactly what we're doing with the stickers, but I they're know. less permanent. It, it was a prototype. Like. Prototype. Right. Yeah, right. Prototype. By the way, the stickers are available at store if you want one. The goal is to just try and find the coolest place to put a GMA mallard sticker yes exactly and the person who comes up with the best location quarterly we will be presenting with the stanley duck trophy stanley duck 
Can't wait. Can't, can't wait. wait. Already can't got some good contenders for the ver- the inaugural Stanley Duck winner. Yeah. That that no one can take away from you, Ben. No matter if people get better and better and better places that they've managed to put GMA stickers, it doesn't matter. You will always be the first one to win the Stanley Duck. I know. It'll that says something. Truly spectacular. Yeah. Quite the honor. Quite the honor. Right? Okay, so hard left turn into the popcorn culture drinking game. Oh, <laughs> I think you mean the popcorn culture libaceous game. Libaceous game. Libations game. Libations. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually not necessarily like a recommended practice, but there have been so many things that people have pointed out to us about our uh, methods of conversation and like little crutches that we rely on that it every single time people have pointed out pointed them out to me and I know that we do them and it's something that I would not have been self-aware about unless people had told me about these things. Yeah, but there are like going through at any given episode. I guarantee you could almost like 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 raise a finger or there could be like a ding in your head or like they just did that thing again. They just did it uh, again. And there, there's so many of them. It is so funny. So uh phenomenon is uh, phenomenon. both what this is and an example of it. Right. Um, like you, we use the word phenomenon a lot, like almost aggressively. Mm. Like I think that we, we place so many different uh, concepts under the umbrella of phenomenon. Okay. Where it's like, I, where I don't even know if we're being like too loosey goosey with it or if we've just really like uncovered a whole bunch of different phenomenon. Oh, okay. I'm already getting a really fun idea. Okay. So less of, so I think what you're suggesting is like a list of rules. And anytime we, anytime, like, anytime we fall victim to one of these, anytime things. we fall victim to one, anytime we say like GMA sticker or the word phenomenon, or like d- just commit an ism commit an ism well, yeah. another one for me is i say sure 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 like so like uh you'll you'll say something and it's like sort of my way of of usually what i intend when i say like sure sure is like like go on continue yeah. like this is me acknowledging that i'm with you so far right and and that's really what i'm going for but another one that we do that has recently been pointed out to me is the uh it's it's almost like ers and ums where it's a. Uh, if I just did it right now, <laughs> you're in through communicating with another person. Yours and arms are usually used as like a, a split second moment for you to have just a little bit more time. Right. It's, to, a, it's a crutch, a crutch yeah. to, to come up with the next thing to say. Vocal fillers, vocal fillers. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And what I just did by repeating you is one that you and I have developed as as a as a conversational duo is we repeat each other as we repeat each other we repeat each other wow and we do it i i know because the way that we record the pop is very uncut really when it comes down to very uncut we we do have an editor who like makes sure we like sound good and parses it together and if there ever is like a moment where we've like run off the rails uh everything kind of gets like very nicely cleaned up uh shout out to ethan for for doing all that for us yeah um but i think that you and i also are like maybe quietly afraid of not just seamlessly flowing into the next piece of conversation. Right. And one of the ways that we've like protected ourselves against that is by using this, like let's repeat each other type of thing. Well, the repeating someone's question back to them is, is like a, a, actual strategy that might be taught to you in like a debate class or something. Okay. Because it gives you that extra few seconds to start formulating your answer. Like you've only just heard it and it's like almost unreasonable to immediately just know exactly what you're going to go back with. So a lot of times and you can catch people doing this on like talk shows and stuff all the time. The host will ask a question. I'll be like, that's a really good question. Anytime anyone responds with that's a really great question. They're not necess- they're not really complimenting the quality of the question and all of its many layered nuances. What they are doing is saying something to give themselves more time to think about the answer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I was that was me resisting did, saying uh, sure sure. Um, <laughs> I thought so. I was like you don't normally say the word okay like that. I know I know I know it felt very unnatural. Yeah. Um, th- this is actually really funny for me though because I so frequently will say wow what a good question and and mean it yes. like in the most genuine sense where I'm like I am so impressed that you thought to ask that specific question like I. <laughs> I'm I'm stoked right now, honestly. Let me tell you more about this while I also prepare what I'm going to say. Right in the back of my head. Um, I I believe you when you when you say it because that is not the typical 
crutch you the typical crutch you lean on is repeating it back yeah so for you to like mix it up and actually compliment the question it often comes across genuine from my perspective oh good 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 yeah Yeah. i'm glad to hear that yeah that makes me that makes me feel like i'm 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 doing it right okay so here's here's my idea though ben okay so sure certainly there's like a list of popcorn culture isms that we uh we, we commit need, on the reg we need we need like a standing reddit page for these things oh we like, need like yeah like a like a like a pinned post on the reddit for uh, things we do precisely and right. then it needs to it needs to be like continuously filled, filled in and yeah perfect. what i'm imagining is like a mass like a bingo card okay right i like a bingo card but not not your standard like 25 square bingo you know, easy mode bingo card. I'm imagining like like a hundred square card or something. Goodness gravy. And I would I have to imagine there is a service somewhere that exists online that can like print you random bingo like ran, that can randomize the squares for you. Okay. Right. So we develop a hundred. Uh, you know, we have of a list of potential things we might say. Okay. When you say a hundred, do you mean a hundred squares? Yeah. Or like do you ten mean by ten grid. T- ten by ten. Okay. I thought yeah. you meant a hundred by a hundred. I was like, oh no no no, that's wh- impossible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At that point in time, it's just like, did they say ubiquitous yeah. in today's episode? But so then, if you have a, uh, you know. A 10 by 10 square getting bingo is a lot harder, That's especially if they're completely randomized. But then we can like like have people print them out, play at home, see who gets bingo. I love it. Does that, that sounds like that sounds fun. That, that, that does sound better than a libation game. I mean, you could also choose to take a libation whenever we whenever we do a thing. But if there's a hundred of them, it feels like it's going to happen a lot. Like I can imagine something is listened uh, or um who well, I'm doing lots of vocal fillers right now. Uh, like Jay and Ben forget the corny joke or something. Yeah, you know? that's a good one. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. That's a lot. Have we done one today? Speaking of which, hey, let me go ahead and just toss right oh. to it. Okay, Corny joke. Did you hear the one about the broken pencil? No, never mind. It was pointless. Oh, nailed it. Oh, that's a good I, one. I felt good about that delivery. That I felt was real good. Never like, forget it. <laughs> it's not a funny joke. It was pointless. It was pointless. Oh, yeah. Be like the pencil it. because the pencil was pointless. The pencil ah, was it's pointless. Broken. I get it. Ah, jokes are always better once explained. <laughs> oh, man. aren't and they? Aren't they? Aren't they? And transitioning immediately from that into our fun fact about coyotes. Yeah, we want to forget these standing running segments on the show. Exactly. Especially if people are trying to fill out their bingo cards. Exactly. Okay, Jay. So this one comes from Sierra Halton. And this was this was something that I cannot believe that all my coyote research had not uncovered yet. And it's it's really it feels so it feels so obvious. It's like so it, it should have been there right before me the whole time. And Sierra was the one who beat me to the punch. And so huge shout out to her for uh, delivering this fun fact to me. But coyotes can actually mate with dogs and their offspring are called koi dogs. Koi dogs? Koi dogs. I didn't know that at all. I know. And once I found out, I was like, well, now I need one. Koi dogs? A koi dog. That seems like the wrong word. I feel like they could do better. Like a... (laughs) Like a dog Odie sounds, you know, that does sound way better. Dog Odie's a yeah. dog Odie does sound yeah. a lot better than a koi dog, a koi dog, which, which sounds like you're describing the, like the personality of this dog. Like he's kind of coy. No, you want to know what it actually reminds me of is corn dogs. Oh yeah. A little bit. Would you say koi dog though? Cause you don't say coyote. You say coyote. Is it like Kai dog? That's a good that's a good question as well. Yeah. And I mean it. Oh, thank because you. Because I don't know the answer. Uh but I for whatever reason the way that it's written I'm reading it as koi dog, but yeah. you're right it could be kai dog cuz it's like coyote, C O Y is kai. Right. But not always, not even usually. Not even usually. This is the problem with the, the English language. <laughs> Very bad at communicating itself. <laughs> it does not hold up to the uh combination combo words. Mm. Yeah, because like the like that's like uh like the word kernel we've complained about it before but like that would be like if you put col at the beginning of right. any other like you would never be like oh that's cur like kernel right it's like it's like no it's cold it's not like yeah when you see colossus you're like actually that's curlossus <laughs> yeah curlossus could be though that could would be a great be. name curlossus 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 the x-men nobody likes because he makes you he always corrects you like i am colossus and this is my brother curlossus and he's like hi guys <laughs> i don't know if you heard he said curlossus <laughs> Let's let's talk about I it. Am, um, if, you, if you say if you say Colossus, that's not me. I won't respond to that. <laughs> like you spelled it the same. 
<laughs> finger no. wag. Finger, finger wag. wag. Okay, so speaking of Marvel, look at me segueing up oh. the storm today. Um, okay, so this time last year, I think it was the March 9th episode of The Pop, we were making predictions about what was going to be happening precisely one year from a year ago. Oh, oh, la- last on um, last year's episode of The Pop, we yes. were predicting what was going to happen this year. We're, we were going to be predicting like what's okay. happening this year. As of recording this episode, it is uh, March 11th, so we're, okay. we're pretty close to exactly one year later. Okay. And we, we had a couple of predictions. You predicted that this week we would be probably making a Pixar video. Okay, let's see. So I would have been thinking that whatever came out after Soul would be coming out now. Mm. That must have been the case because they pushed Soul back. They pushed Soul back. They pushed Soul back. uh, The really interesting thing about the fact that we did it on that particular week is that we were were basically like running headfirst into covid and quarantine and like the world for just about everybody was about to change in ways that had basically been uh, you know right okay so what happened is last year at this time onward must have come out oh because, I, right. I would have thought soul's gonna cut because pixar's usual schedule is like march june november uh i guess sometimes they do november maybe soul was supposed to come out in june that doesn't sound right they do a lot of june releases it's often like june 16th almost a lot right um, but I guess that's what I would have thought that they would have come out with soul, whatever's coming out after soul, which I think is like turning red, uh, would come out n- now ish <laughs> now ish. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Instead, we made a video about Raya and the last dragon. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. Ooh, who, who popcorn culture. Fun fact. Uh, we've talked before about the name to look for in the credits. Yes. Is the caffeinator Carlos, the caffeinator Carlos. I think we predicted that we were like, whenever Raya comes out, we'll have to look out and see if he was the caffeinator. He was. Amazing. Amazing. Well done, Carlos. Confirmed. Confirmed. Confirmed right. caffeinator. Let's talk about this for a second because okay. this was sort of um, an odd, I'm going to do it, phenomenon oh. uh, with Raya and the Last Dragon. And, and it could be the case that so far I'm still like in the dark on this and I could be wrong, but there has been a, like th- an odd effect in that there are next to no Easter eggs in Raya and the Last Dragon. Well, that is... And surprising. I mean, yeah, I mean, the caffeinator is just like an in-house Easter egg. That's not even like a real Easter egg that Disney does. Sure. You know, like yeah. that's, that's just a real job he does. We right. just know to look for him. We just know to look for him. Um, uh, Alan Tudyk is the voice of Tuck Tuck, yep. who is um, and he, he does a voice in every Disney animated movie now. Yes. Yes. Actually, interestingly, in Moana, he is Hey Hey, but he's also the the gentleman that uh, is looking at Hey Hey and he's like, shouldn't we just eat him? <laughs> he, he's that voice, too. That's which funny. I didn't know that until just recently when I was looking up Alan Tudyk's huh. other roles. I was like, oh, no way. That's him. Cool. Um but yeah, so the the thing about Raya is that it was basically being produced and developed and made and everything during quarantine. So uh, a lot of the movie was made literally from like all the way around the world, like tons of different homes and computers and, and all sorts of stuff. And what is baffling to me is that next to no Easter eggs made it in while the opportunity would have felt so ripe. Right. Like no one's going to know. No, I'm going to put this here. No one's going to see it because there's so, like the checks and balances are so it's like they're they're all out of whack. They're all out of so whack. easy to sneak stuff in. Exactly. Exactly. And so I think what is that's what is most interesting to me about it is that it almost seems that given the freedom of of being home, the animators did not slip these things in unless they are like much, much deeper and like, oh. it's going to be like harder to find. See, this to me makes it feel like because the you never know with Easter eggs. Like, was this a group decision or did like someone sneak it in? And that's the fun thing. Like you, I, I often just don't know. Like if, when it's like a hidden Mickey, that to me feels like people talked about it. Like we need to include or like a one thirteen. That feels like people talked about it. I would be willing to bet that there is a meeting somewhere at this point in time as to where do we do a one thirteen. Like, right. like I would be willing to bet that that is on people's radars enough. Pizza Planet truck, Luxo Ball, all of right. like the very like super classic Pixar yeah, like, Easter eggs. But this makes it feel like yeah, it makes it feel like it's much more intentional than I would have thought. That is that kind of what I'm like, thinking. Yeah, 
Whereas I would have thought maybe it was like, oh yeah, I needed a thing. So I grabbed Lotso and dropped him in this girl's room. Isn't that fun? And they're like, that is fun. Cool. Leave it in. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Um, and who knows? Maybe that is how it's happening. But to me, cause I, I refuse to believe that people could resist putting in Easter eggs like me. So yeah, what my, my guess is, is that there are Easter eggs, but it's more like personal in-house things. Yes. Yeah. I think I, I could totally see that. Like if you were like, at home at your kitchen table and you're like animating a scene inside of a hut that instead of incorporating like a, you know a chair from a prior disney movie or something you literally animate the chair in the room with you yeah so it's like oh our family rocking chair is now in raya is now in raya and no one yeah. knows and except no for knows. me but we'll know but we'll know yeah what a piece of legacy for what the, a, yeah for the fam we're we're living on we're living on exactly people pe- no one will know but will know but we'll know yes yeah um that's an interesting so may i wonder how many of those things are in raya or if there's easter eggs and people just have or like we just haven't fine tooth combed it enough yet and, that, and that's entirely possible um this this was and i will tell you that this is not something that mm-hmm. i typically do in general i actually abstain from watching other uh, content creators that make stuff similar to ours specifically because right. I am constantly afraid of like loving an idea that somebody comes up with and having it lodge into my brain so aggressively that I, I can't shake it until like we've attempted to do our version of it. It is such a weird problem because it's like we are very much in the community of people who like deep dive these things. And if you're just on the other side, just a viewer, you probably watch lots of people that like do, us. Yes. And like, you know, as someone who makes this stuff and who enjoys it, it's like, I think I would, I would definitely like a lot of other people's content, but I will actively not watch. I don't like, I don't watch any other theory channels right. at all. Cause yep. like, I don't, yeah, same thing. I don't want to be influenced. I don't want people to be, I don't want to like, accidentally steal someone's idea or anything exactly like yeah. and and with that though there's there's also sort of this sense of like there's a certain amount and i don't it, it's almost like how I've, I've described before how like your name is like the letter j and i feel like i can hear the letter j the way i say it instead of like jay mm-hmm. it's the same way with like easter eggs in the movies where it's like you could go through and and watch one of these channels that's gone through and like earmarked all of them and it's like 47 things you missed in toy story right you know or whatever and you could like literally spot them all but it's almost like i feel like the audience can feel the difference when i found them on my own and that so typically even those types of videos like i don't watch so it's like right the Easter eggs even if it's found, just information right even if it's just information right. it's like I, I found like the easter eggs that we point out i found them like right you know, like and, and I, I i earned those easter eggs and i know you can tell because there's a difference between whether difference. or not someone told me i think there is a difference for sure yeah i do too. yeah uh because there is there's like a like a swelling pride that happens when you do spot one of those things and you're like oh <gasps> there it is that's look, it look, no look, way look, that's look, so cool look, look. um yeah but where was i going with this okay think 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 uh easter eggs oh but so um i did not spot any easter eggs in raya and i was like oh that's so weird like i how could there not be any and so i would say like maybe one of the first times that i've done this uh in recent history i did just i was like i'm watch mojo you figure it out yet like you know it was it was kind of like one of these like i'm gonna go to the big box stores and hope that they have that rare collectible or something you know like like did you guys figure it out because we didn't um and as far as i could tell i wasn't seeing anything and maybe this is like your your facebook problem where you were like i need a way to download all the the photos from my my facebook album and then yeah like literally the same week that you brought it up it was like delivered as a feature of facebook's like sure whatever so maybe it's up now maybe it's up now and i just haven't looked so there's a there's a very real possibility that by the time this episode goes live i'm just gonna get inundated with emails where people are like oh ben they're everywhere yeah <laughs> well, this, this episode will go up like two weeks after raya has come out that's so, true so there, there will be some, some yeah. incubation time that's a, that's a good point that's a very good point so who knows i will be very eager to find out if you guys have found anything do send it my way I'm, I'm curious to hear you can either leave it in the comments down below you can go find us over on reddit where it is i never know how to do the reddit r popcorn r culture. slash popcorn culture r slash popcorn culture that's us uh you can email me any of your thoughts to popcorn culture pod at gmail.com i do appreciate your uh corny joke submissions 
and fun facts about coyotes. If you guys have found good things that I haven't seen before, as you know, kind of featured in today's episode. Yeah. Uh, also, we are nearing the end of the available window to get in on the uh, very first Patreon physical perk that we have available at our $25 tier, which is Fred the Cup. Um, if you guys have been listening to the pop for a long time, you know that I've been on my quest to simplify things and have a one cup lifestyle. Uh, I have named my personal cup Fred, and it is a it's mine. It's personally a green Yeti uh, tumbler, and it has laser etched into it uh, the logo for popcorn culture. Yeah, we will actually ultimately have uh, three different colors available. Um, if you are interested in getting in on this, uh, you can do so up until the end of March. And if you are after that time, uh, like starting April 1st, then you will be in for the Q2 item, which has not yet been selected yet. So if you want to check that out, you can do so at patreon.com slash popcorn culture. But otherwise, guys, thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. We will see you next week. Pop, pop. <laughs>